Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is show you how to load up the palette. So I've placed the colors on the palette. I just squirt them out of the tube right onto the palette. And I take a clean knife, and I come up to the pile of paint and pull straight down. I pull with kind of a, a medium pressure, not too hard. And you can wipe your knife off in between colors to clean it if you want to. You don't always have to. And this gives you a very nice even pile of paint to work out of so you're not tapping the brush in the big blob. And that's all it takes to lay out your palette. Now we can tap a two inch brush into a little bit of blue. And let's start right here and drop in a little blue area to the sky. We don't need too much of this today. Just a very small amount right up there at the top. Let it blend down and get lighter as it comes down toward the horizon. With a little bit of black on the one inch brush, let's come right in here and drop in some shadow to some of these clouds up here. I think today we're gonna have some very nice large clouds. So some of this shadow color in here, it'll make them look a little bigger and three dimensional. And let's do some over here too. With a clean two inch brush, let's go ahead and blend out the sky. Now I don't have to be very careful because this is just the shadow part of the clouds and we'll be highlighting them later. So I'm just softening them right now, just a little bit. That's good enough. Just a quick little blend. Now you see I left a little white area already on the top of that cloud, but I wanna make that even more distinct. But it did give me a good idea of what my cloud would, would sort of look like. So I like leaving those white areas on top. There. Load a lot of nice white paint on that brush and you'll get a lot of highlights in your clouds just by swirling them in. Back to the two inch brush and let's blend out the bottom of these clouds. Very, very lightly. Work that highlight into the shadow, but not too much. We just want to soften them a little bit and then leave them alone. If you do this too much, you'll lose your whole cloud. They'll just, it'll turn into one color and you won't be happy with it. Now that we're done with our sky, we can think about a little range of mountains back here. Now today, I don't want my mountains very large. So I'm kind of using the point of that knife just to drop in the basic outline of the top. I'm not worried about the bottom at all. With the one inch brush, we can grab this mountain at the top and blend down. I'm pulling it almost straight down because I want this mountain to be very steep. And then we'll blend out the bottom to make it look very soft and misty with a little bit of brown and white. We can shape our mountain with, with these highlights. Let them run right down the mountain with very little pressure on the knife. Don't need much pressure at all. There, just work a few highlights around. When you're done with your mountain, you can take a clean two inch brush and very lightly blend out the bottom. This creates a little bit of mist and makes it look soft. Not too much. You don't wanna lose your mountain. Just wanna soften it a little bit. With the one inch brush, we can add some very, very distant grassy meadows back here. I'm just rubbing back and forth with that brush. I'm not tapping because I don't want any texture back here in this grass. Maybe it'll run up the mountain a little bit. This is so far away. Very, very pale. I added some white to that color. Now we can begin thinking about some things that are a little bit closer. So I'll just tap in 
a little rolling hill with the corner of the one inch brush. This is a little bit darker, so it seems closer. And I'm just using the corner of the brush only. And it comes like this, right here. Just drop it in wherever you want. With the script liner and a little touch of white paint, we can begin dropping in a very, very distant river back in here. So far away, there's almost no detail at all. Almost none. And we're on a hill and looking down on it. So that's the perspective you have to think of when you drop this in. With the filbert brush and some black and blue and green, we can now think about some little tiny trees back here on these mountains. Just tap with that brush. Just enough to get the paint to come off. Don't push too hard. Maybe, maybe we don't want too many back in the background. But as we come a little closer, and I think this stream is closer than that mountain, we can get a little darker and a little larger with our shapes. Ooh, I like that. Let them run right up the mountain. There. All that good dark color on there. And we'll come back and, and sparkle it up with some highlight in just a second. When you're done with the right side there, then you can jump right on over to the left side and do the same exact thing. Just tap with the filbert brush. There, let them run right down the mountain. This really helps to form and shape your mountain. You can create all sorts of nice angles with these trees. We can drop on a tiny touch of highlight to some of these trees. We don't need much. Very, very, very minimal amount. Just here and there on a few of the closer ones and leave them all alone. Now we'll tap the two inch brush through some black and green and blue. And let's add some foreground land. Just a little bit because I really like that background and I don't want to lose it. So we'll just tap in a small amount of land. Maybe, maybe this will look like you're standing up on a hill looking down into a valley and up like that. That's pretty nice. I like that effect. With the fan brush, we can begin tapping in some trees. Maybe, maybe we'll just tap down like this to create some evergreen trees. And they come off and down right off the canvas like that. And let's have a few back here. Maybe some of these will show through. And if they do, they'll look very nice. They'll look like a lot of detail in the background there. And let's begin thinking about some large trees. I'm going to use the corner of the brush to tap just a little. Maybe we'll make him taller. Right up into that river there. There's another one. Anywhere you want a tree, just drop it right in. But use the corner of the brush to tap. Don't use the whole brush. It won't look as good. Now we can begin thinking about a tree that grows right there. And this is just the dark part. So we'll be back and highlight this. But for now, we just need some dark color. Let's do another tree right here. Maybe this one's not quite as big. With a little bit of yellow and green on a one inch brush, let's begin highlighting these trees. I'm just going to touch very lightly with the corner of that brush and shape all the little limbs in here. Be sure to leave most of the dark areas in your tree because they indicate shadows. Without the dark, it'll look very flat. 
I don't want a flat tree. I want a lot of depth and dimension in my painting. So leave all that dark in there. Now I've changed to a two inch brush with some of that same yellow and green. We can tap on just a few little grassy highlights down here. Let them get darker as they come down toward the corner. Maybe we want some right there. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website and also my DVD for sale. And thanks for watching.